Yeah, folks, what I was doing is checking out, uh, and we we got real good friends up at the French Canadian Telescope because from all uh, they're listing stuff, and I looked up Fomal Hot. Okay, I think it pretty much stands for formal hot, but let's go ahead and go to. Uh, What's cool is what they're doing is they are listing the planets and basically you look to the left uh, because what they're doing is they're scrolling what the name of the planet is to the right here and as it comes up they will list it to the right okay but you gotta look for the biggest object you pretty much see to your left okay so and you're not really noticing right now because we don't have any objects right there in the sky so let me go back to the beginning of the video and here we go. See, they got this. So it pretty much stands for formal hot. But as you see, we get to know how what it looks like when it comes up. Okay, because Neptune is first. So basically, Neptune is in there somewhere. And basically what it is, it's pretty much the shadows that you see as they go by because they're so large. Okay. And we're as close to them as we've been in ages. Okay? So Fomal is going to be what's going to do the colorization. It's basically this. Okay? Plus the sun's going down. Okay? But it's not just the sun. This is in the supergiants. Check this out. Pretty much it stands for formal hot. Okay? And we'll get up here. It's 2.2 .2 mass of the sun. But it was... It's larger, it's two t times two, but you see that it's 8,700K, okay? If I'm trying to remember, I think the sun is like something like uh, 4,700K or something like that, okay? But this thing is two times the size. So this is a dying sun that was way, that is two and a, two and a quarter, just a little bit under two and a quarter the size of the sun, okay? And it's in my constellation because I'm a Pisces. So anyway, mighty, mighty Pisces. All right, so that's where it is. And they're in the super giants. And there's the main sequence alley. And the giants are over here. Basically, the giants are more of the dying stars, okay? There are bright stars here. And there's, some of them, I think, are larger than the sun. I don't want to be quoted as being wrong. But formal halt, formal halt, that's pretty much how you say it, formal hot. Formal hot is right there behind because Rigel... And, uh, well, I'm wrong on saying that, but uh, Alaraf and the sun are about right here, pretty close to Formal Hot. So let's look at some video. That What you need to notice here is how long it takes this to burn out, okay? So it's way more than the sun because the sun is here, okay? And, yeah, it's flaring. It's part of these flares that you see here, but it's the sun and the supergiants, and it's probably basically Alaraf that is doing this back here, okay? Alaraf. Because Alaraf is bigger than the sun, and also the supergiants are, okay? So let me get down here so you can see the clock and see how long it takes for that flare to die down, okay? That flare pretty much stays constant right there. Watch your clock. There's your clock down on the bottom. And I'll play it back when it blinks, okay? Matter of fact, I'm going to go over here and jump back on it, okay? So you watch this here, and this really doesn't die out. So it's like I was saying... The sun and the supergiants, the sun is in the main sequence, okay? And I'll pop back, and you can even back the video up to the graph I just showed you, the supergiants. And I can probably put Al Raf and the sun in there, and it'll show up in the supergiants main sequence. There's way more than one sun, folks. Way more than one sun. It just makes common sense. The sun is a star, and there's lots of stars out there. We see them every night, and they're bright, just like the sun. It's just that they're farther away. That's why I did my code name, Beano Black. I don't want to see the sun. I don't want to see the world go black. Okay? So, as you see the sun there, and this is massive distances in space, and they're in alignment pretty good, these suns are, these fiery balls, whenever the big bangs happen, and big bangs, not more than, there was more than one big bang. That's what my, always will, to the, die and come back and the other side and the whole lot, nine yards. Okay? Big bangs, not just a big bang. Okay? And as we already know, something blew up on Jupiter. Nothing hit it, right? So there's stuff running into each other, okay? I already know that something, an asteroid or a comet ran into it, and there's comets running into the sun all the time, okay? Stuff runs into each other out there, okay? 
So this is the recent footage here. Now I got one more other footage I'm going to show you since I played this back and forth. I'll save some video time and get out of here for a second, okay? Now another reason this might not be dying out, even if, even if it is coming off the sun, okay? Even if this flare is just coming off the sun and not ALRAF, and like the object I just showed you, you know, the formal hot, basically formal hot, okay? And it's still at 87K. And you can see that it's fighting this object off here, and we've already seen how the sun puts out that filament and does her CME react, just does, it just pretty much does a CME, okay? The sun puts out CMEs because it's hot and a big-ass fireball. And, and that's another interesting thing is you see how it blinked there? And there's, are we getting the meatball or another big object in front of the sun at that certain time there? Because we didn't get any footage at that time. You see what I'm saying? Now, if you watch the clock down here, they pretty much give you everything. But at about that time, they couldn't give you a shot of the sun. Now, watch this. It's going to blink out again. I'm going to keep my deal off the cursor. You watch the clock. At that certain time, the middle of the sun, they don't have a shot. Okay. Now, it could have been a CME that hit the satellite that made it blink out. Okay. Given actual factual possibilities. Okay. Presuming and assuming, but at the same time, we've seen the sun blink lately, right? And there it goes. You see what I'm saying? And now we get back in. It's because they gave everything that they had for time lapse and feed of the sun at that time. You see what I'm saying? And Alraf, and there's a big CME and everything. And I apologize, but actually, I'll just put it back a little bit. Okay, now we'll play and we'll be able to see that. We'll get that CME here blast here in a second with you to be able to see the clock. Okay. There you go. Whammo. Okay. Now, is that just the sun, or is it Alaraf in the sun? You see what I'm saying? And we're warmer right now, and we're farther away from the sun than we've ever been in a long time. You see what I'm saying? And we've had temperatures, you know, high temperature readings today, 15 to 20 degrees higher than your normal highs today, okay? So is it Alaraf? Is it way more than Alaraf in the sun? And we're getting real hot down here on Earth, and we're pretty much in an 82 to 88-year cycle of the dirty 30s, okay? And then what about the dark ages? Okay. So, and I don't want to scare people. I'm not here to, you know, just like everybody on Dutch Sense and everything like that. We aren't out here. We're just showing you actual factual data. And this is actual factual eye data. Okay. The data is the clock down there and your eyes show you what's going on on the shots on the right. Okay. So that was today. Now, I'm pretty sure there's a, there's a snowstorm down here. But at the same time, you do, I'm going to back it up a little bit. Now, you see that streak there, just as I started to back up? And you get these streaks, and what they're doing is it is a holograph from up on the sun that's coming down, okay? And it is pretty much daylight, as you see the clock up to the right. And we're at near Meyer Station, okay? And you'll see some more of these streaks. See those streaks there? And that's coming from outer space, off the sun and the other objects that are up there, okay? Now, it also might be an actual auroral action from the CME that came off of the sun, but it is the 27th. That means it would be the it would be like a back x-ray shot of that it's coming off, and you can see the dark streaks. I don't even have to point it. I can do it here on the right, on the white, and you can see that over to the left. And I'll go back some more, and then I'll just basically go forward again because basically we just had gray there, and actually I can just do start, and it'll play. And see that, how that those streaks came in there? So otherwise, it looks like there's a snowstorm going on down there, but you actually still get that black light auroral action at Antarctica on the bottom of the Earth. And pretty much snowstorm. They must be getting a blizzard or something going on during the daylight hours down there because it'll probably go black here in a minute as we play it through. But at the same time, and remember, go watch all the video that I captured from the 24th. We pretty much have the big meatball or whatever else, uh, Hercules, you really can't nail it down because basically you're not going to nail it down with worldwide uh, telescope and so forth and astronomy things because you're not going to see it. And it wasn't the moon. It wasn't Jupiter. It wasn't Venus. All that stuff was below the horizon line. So we did a real good catch of catching what was actually visible to your eyes. And basically, if you go to worldwide telescope on the 24th, what I show in my videos, if you back up and watch the last half dozen videos of mine, all that stuff was right there, live video camera. Okay. At nighttime, you had the shadow of a meatball or whatever the hell, Herculobus or her, whatever, and, and Hercules or Herculobus or whatever you want to call that dwarf store, we caught it in the sky on the Nehemiah camera. So, and I'll even show you that video in a minute on my website.
Now, formal hot is basically stands for formal hot, and I showed you the data on it. But the most thing is to look at here at the deal is super giants because the sun and Al are right here. Let me pull that up on. Yeah, it sends 5780K, I believe. And Al Araf is 62K. So it's. Br so basically, here you go. And then what's going to be really get you when we showed you the temperatures there. And here's going to be the Hertzberg Russell diagram. And that's what it is. Now, actually, Al Araf is actually moving back away from the sun a little bit because earlier this year. If you watch my videos, Alaraf was pretty much right up underneath the sun. Okay, now are they showing it going that it is this? But this should be actual data, folks. They even do this point pinpoint because basically lasers do this for you. So the lasers are showing it going back away. So now the sun is is this the sun and Alaraf both doing CMEs at each other, and we're getting that video action that I just showed you, or what's really going on? Okay. Because there's your super giants in the main sequence alley in there. Physical size comparison, sun and Alaraf. Alaraf's bigger. Now, it is fall, and we're getting a record temperatures, correct? Okay. Now, here's a graph. All right. Alaraf and the sun, central time right now. Well, I'm not up in Wollaston, but basically, I put in hometown zip code. So, But I got a lot of hometowns. I get around. So anyway, there's look of side rail time. So there's all the data on it. And this is you look at your time and everything down here, Central Standard Time, and that's Alaraf and the sun going down. See, so we're getting the sun of both that big sun, that big star Alaraf, and the sun. Okay, folks. So that's what the heat is from, you see, and that's why we're probably possibly going to have a warm winter because we're in the fall solstice. We're as far as away from the sun that we possibly can be right now. As a matter of fact, well, let's get that distance. Now, remember, earlier this summer and even in the spring, we were as close to the sun as we have been in ages, okay, record closeness, okay. Now we're beginning to get into that. Well, it's not close to a record yet, but we are getting to the fall solstice, so we're the farther away from the sun as we possibly can. Now, you back the video up a little bit, and because I'm going to scroll this data here, but you back the video back up to what I was showing you, how big Alaraf is and how close it is to the sun, and also the video of what's flaring behind the sun. So the sun and Alaraf are basically cme in at each other's ass, okay? That's what's going on. They're cme in at each other's ass, okay? It's not just the sun that we see on CMEs, okay? But most all this data that the, the NASA does give you is the CMEs off of the sun. But there still is CME action that's hitting the sun that's helping the sun CME at us and everything else in space. Okay? Because no matter what, this is your actual sun Alaraf factual, actual data. Okay? And there you go. In the supergiants right next to each other. Massive distances between Alaraf and the sun. Let's look at that. But at the same time, you've seen the video, you see the sizes, and they are basically cme and at each other's ass. And then we are getting all that radioactive, yes, the sun is radioactive, and we are getting that actual sunlight down here on. And yes, folks, everything's pretty much in alignment. You see that? We're very much in the Big Bangs, the Big Bangs era. Okay, in stereo play. Okay, that's why everybody's freaking, and that's why they're pulling in, and that's why everybody's uncertain. And see, folks, the massive distances, but it's two times the size. You see what I'm saying? And then, so we'll we'll, we'll knock this down to an AU too. Okay. Okay, 208.8 trillion miles. So they're far apart, but a lot of energy. Forget it. I've been having my favorite beverage. So anyway, it's 208.8 trillion miles apart, but we're getting a hell of a lot of flipping heat off of it. And as you can see on this, even you can tell, but go back and then watch the video too. And off this latest Navy photo, you can even see that this stuff's happening in line and it's even farther back. And Alaraf and all these supergiant suns are in line in the main sequence, okay? So there's way more than just the sun, folks. We get a hell of a lot of heat from the stars. Basically, there's suns out there in the supergiant's main sequence, ladies and gentlemen. And, and this planet here pretty much is in around too close now now I'm not saying that couldn't be mercury but really it's not because basically these are dark planets dark or even if they are hot and still burning and got are radioactive 
because actual factual, usually we see Mercury and everything like that, and Venus or Jupiter and everything like that will look something like this. And I would think that more than likely this is either Mercury or Venus, right?